Good evening, everyone. So here we are at another moment, just showing us that we never really know what's going to happen. And we fortunately are people who live in such a way that we rise to the occasion and to the moment, very quickly turn what was to be a beautiful in-house program celebrating Master's birthday into a beautiful online program celebrating Master's birthday. So it's great to be sharing this with all of you. Happy birthday to everyone, those few in the temple, and all of you at home. We always celebrate Master's birthday together like this because really, in essence, very much like what we've just been talking about with Christ consciousness being reborn within us. Today we celebrate that same consciousness being born in all of us again and again through Master. So each year, January 5th really is a birthday for all of us. So we have a lovely program uh, filled with uh, Master's voice, Swamiji's voice, a lot of music that speaks to uh, the greatness and the extraordinary gift that we've all been given in this incarnation to be this close to such a great soul. I think we'll hear it again and again throughout the evening in the music, in the readings, just in the energy that we have. So let's all celebrate being at this wonderful party together this evening. Let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Uteshwar, our beloved Guru Deva, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, saints of all religions, friend and guide, Swami Kriyananda, we humbly bow before you all. Beloved Master, we are here tonight with great gratitude for your presence in our lives. Our hearts are filled with your love. And we ask that you be with us to help us become ever increasingly pure channels of your love and your light into this world. Happy birthday, dear Master. We love celebrating with you. Om, peace, amen. Thank you. 
Physical meditation from Master, expansion in eternity. Eternity yawns at me, below, above, on the left and on the right, in front and behind, within and without. With open eyes, I behold myself as the little body, with closed eyes, I perceive myself as the cosmic center around which revolves the sphere of eternity, the sphere of bliss, the sphere of omnipresent, omniscient living space. I feel him like a gentle breath of bliss breathing in my body of universes. I perceive him shining through the bright twinkles of all luminosity and through the waves of cosmic consciousness. I behold him as the light of solar inspiration, holding the luminaries of my thoughts in the rhythms of balance. I feel him as a bursting voice, leading, guiding, teaching secretly in the soul temple of all men 
and all things in creation. He is the fountain of wisdom and of radiant inspiration flowing through all souls. He is the fragrance oozing from the incense of all hearts. He is a garden of celestial blossoms and bright thought flowers. He is the love that inspires our love dreams. I feel him percolating through my heart, through all hearts, through the pores of the earth, through the sky, through all created things. He is the eternal motion of joy. He is the mirror of silence in which all creation is reflected. In the voice of the viol, the flute, and the deep-toned organ, I hear God's voice. The reality of my life cannot die, for I am indestructible consciousness. I am infinite. I am tireless. I am spaceless. I am beyond body, mind, thought, speech, and utterance. Beyond all matter and mind. I am spaceless. I am infinite. I am endless bliss. The ocean of spirit has become the little bubble of my soul. The bubble of my life cannot die, whether floating in birth or disappearing in death, in the ocean of cosmic consciousness, for I am indestructible consciousness, protected in the bosom of spirit's immortality. I am no longer the wave of consciousness thinking itself separated from the sea of cosmic consciousness. I am the ocean of spirit that has become the wave of human life. When I awake, I'll see thy face. When I awake, I'll see thy light. When I awake, I'll see thy face. When I awake, I'll see thy light. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy light. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy light. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy light. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy light. When I awake, I'll end all sorrows. When I awake, I'll know thy joy. When I awake, I'll end all sorrows. When I awake, I'll know thy joy. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy joy. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy joy. Mother, awake me from my dreams, Mother, awake me in thy joy. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy joy. When I awake, I'll end all fears. When I awake, I'll know thy love. When I awake, I'll end all fear. When I awake, I'll know thy love. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, 
Father, awake me in thy love. Hand in hand we're dancing together, dancing together in thy love. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy love. Hand in hand we're dancing together, dancing together in thy love. When I awake, I'll see thy face. When I awake, I'll see thy light. When I awake, I'll see thy face. When I awake, I'll see thy light. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy light. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy light. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy light. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy light. When I awake, I'll end all sorrows. When I awake, I'll know thy joy. When I awake, I'll end all sorrows. When I awake, I'll know thy joy. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy joy. Hand in hand we're dancing. Dancing together in thy joy. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy joy. Hand in hand we're dancing together. Dancing together in thy joy. When I awake, I'll end all fear. When I awake, I'll go. When I awake, I'll end all fear. When I awake, I'll know thy love. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy love. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy love. Mother, awake me from my dreams. Mother, awake me in thy love. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy love. Hand in hand, we're dancing together, dancing together in thy love. Dancing together in I love dancing together in thy love. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. If you want to cross the ocean of delusion, if you want to cross the ocean of delusion, Shaming the white lotus in purity, shaming the white lotus in purity, beyond all duality, Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet 
of thy Guru. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. If you want to cross the ocean of delusion, if you want to cross the ocean of delusion, shaming the white lotus in purity, shaming the white lotus in purity, beyond all duality, Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. If you want to cross the ocean of delusion, if you want to cross the ocean of delusion, Shaming the white lotus in purity, shaming the white lotus in purity, beyond all duality. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. Thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. Let's meditate together now for about 10 minutes. Sitting upright wherever you are, keeping your awareness at the point between the eyebrows. And from that place, looking into Master's eyes, Master said, when I look through my third eye, I see saints everywhere and in everyone. So let us follow his example now and peer into the universe, seeing God consciousness, feeling it.
is a dream, time like a stream, carries our burdens away. Never despair, joys everywhere, love can be friend you today. Free from all care, like birds on the air, soar above griefs and worries, seek joy and be gay. Often on earth, things of great worth, worldly ambitions defy. Sometimes a friend helps us ascend up from life's cares to the skies. Love is a star, though shining afar. It can guide us and help us toward light to draw nigh. Love is a star though shining afar it can guide us and help us toward light to draw nigh a reading from the new path by swami kriyananda on january 5th the disciples gathered at mount washington to celebrate Paramahansa Yogananda's birthday. As the function began, we went up to him individually and knelt for his blessing. After a banquet, later, he spoke of his longing to see an awakening of divine love throughout the world. In a more personal vein, he continued, I never dreamt during my first years of teaching in this country that such a fellow feeling in God's love would be possible here. It exists only because you have lived up to the ideals I, that I have cherished and which I have lived for in the company of my great guru. Friendship in God surely was the key to our relationship with him. It implied no easygoing relationship such as worldly people enjoy with one another, but, but rather demanded of us our utmost. The friendship our guru extended to us was to our souls. To reciprocate in kind meant to strive ever to meet him on that divine level. Those who clung to the desire for ego gratification could not coax from him a compromise in the pure quality of his friendship for us. If a disciple flattered him, master would gaze at him quietly as if to say, I will not desecrate the love I have for you by accepting this level of communication. Always, he held out to us the highest ideal to which each of us might aspire. Such perfect love imposes the most demanding of all disciplines, for it asks nothing less of the disciple ultimately than the total gift of himself to God. I used to pray to Master, teach me to love me. Teach me to love you as you love me. Chatting with a group of us one day in the main office, he looked at me penetratingly and said, how can the little cup expect to hold the whole ocean of love? First, it has to expand and become as big as the ocean. The Indian scriptures state that when the soul releases its hold on egoism, it merges into the ocean of spirit and becomes one with it. While most of us loved master from varying degrees of ego consciousness, 
His love for us was without limit, cosmic. To ordinary human beings, such love is inconceivable. I killed Yogananda long ago, he said. No one dwells in this temple now but God. His love for us was God's love manifested through his human form. For many years I've wanted to visit. My only real regret is that I couldn't be here, be here when Mr. Black was still here. On the other hand, I have the compensating joy of having Bob Raymer here. Um, I have to really hand it to Oliver. His energy was extraordinary. In the last year of his life, he wrote to me asking for suggestions for how to start a community. Here he was, 93, 94. You don't, 95, you don't start communities at 95, but it was, a, <laughs> it was extraordinary. It's, it's, uh, as Bob was saying, it's like old times being together. I came to Master in 48, that was 44 years ago. <clears throat> it seems to probably most of you like a long time. To me, it seems like yesterday. And although I mentioned earlier, I always would have liked not to have to lecture, that aspect of my nature is well balanced and compensated for by the fact that I love to share. And what I love to share is his teachings, his philosophy, his vibration, if possible, to the extent that he uh, allows me to be a channel for that because he's no longer with us, and yet he's with all of us. To me, his reality is not something that ended in, on March 7th, 1952, when he left his body. His reality is today. I feel him with me all the time. I see him in many of you. That reality that he brought into the world was not a historic event, although it was also that. It was a new vibration, a new dispensation, that will last for a long, long time, perhaps forever, on this planet. Just as all the great saints who ever lived are still living. In fact, there's a very interesting example of that that uh, <clears throat> springs to mind of a book that I discovered in India called the Book of Brigu, which is a, uh, an ancient, Brigu is an ancient saint. Master tells a story about him in uh, his lessons about his humility and how, uh, through his humility, um, Krishna called him the saint of all saints. In the Bhagavad Gita, he's called, Among Saints, I am Brigu. And uh, he wrote a book of prophecies, at least he's supposed to have written them. And uh, a number of people have gone there, including myself, and found things about themselves, very specific names, etc. But uh, one man told me a really interesting story that uh, he went, he, he's an Indian who lives in Los Angeles, went back to India and visited this book of Brigu. And during the reading it said, while this is being read, there will be a thunderclap. And there was absolutely a blue sky. Right at that moment, there was a loud thunderclap. And uh, it makes you think that uh, those saints who lived thousands of years ago, they're just as alive today. They can be just as active in people's lives whenever we come onto this planet in time because they are beyond time. And that's how Master is, beyond time. One time, Sister, uh, Louise Royston, she was a, uh, an older disciple, looked something like a rabbit, uh, sort of a little fuddy-duddy. Master used to say about all the people who would find freedom uh, salvation in this life, and he'd look out the window. I remember him at the desert looking out the window and saying, even she. And uh, he said, you know, she was even uglier when she came. <laughs> it was, you know, he was so human. And yet, so, so full of love, so kind. In all his dealings, you were dealing with a God-man and a man-God, and you couldn't tell which was which. <laughs> there was this lovely story, I think I've mentioned it in my book, The Path, of uh, how he went out to a 
shop, he had a little collection of umbrellas. He used to collect things more to keep his, bo his mind down to the body than for anything else. It didn't, umbrellas couldn't mean much to him after all. Somebody who could roam around the astral, but, uh, or the universe, uh, in God. But uh, he bought this umbrella and he haggled the man down because he felt, well, he was representing a spiritual work. He should get the best price possible. He should be practical. <laughs> and so he knocked him down to the best price he possibly could. And then having gotten this, this absolute bargain, gave him twice as much money as the man asked for. <laughs> <laughs> and the man said, oh, you're a gentleman. And he gave him one of his best umbrella. And Master came back, and I remember him saying, and he said, uh, that was an awfully poor rug he had in his shop. I think I'll buy him a new rug. <laughs> but this kind of sweetness that uh, was under, uh, under all the, after all, he was a, a conqueror, too. He was a man who had to build a great work. He was very, very strong and dynamic. But underneath that, there was this lovely, sweetness of nature that pervaded everything that he did. You could always, sometimes he'd have to scold us. I know when he scolded me, I look in, I'd look into his eyes and I'd see that look of regret in his eyes that if only he didn't have to scold me, but I needed it. it made me feel bad for making him scold me. <laughs> there was a delightful story of, uh, that one of, my, uh, one of the monks there told me that he was sitting in, in a room, this third floor, floor interview room upstairs, and there was a nun sitting at one end of the room, and this monk was sitting at the other end, a room not quite this long, but a fairly large room, and uh, Master was giving this, this nun a good scolding, and he'd think that he was really angry. But he was only trying to impress this thought on her. And every time he turned his back to her and was facing this monk, he'd break into a smile and wink and then turn back like this. <laughs> but he had this kind of, of control that made it uh, possible for him to switch from one to another. Why? Basically because he wasn't even there. That was the other thing that amazed me when I look at him. He wasn't there. He was everywhere. You weren't looking into the eyes of a person with a personality. And when people talk about him and his personality, I realize they haven't really understood. He did have a personality in the sense of something he had to assume. You have to function with something after all. But it wasn't a personality because there was no personal likes or dislikes. He had no thought that I like this or I like that. Some people like to eat mangoes because the master loved mangoes. Well, yeah, he loved mangoes, but also he couldn't have cared less about them. He liked everything. What could he not like? I remember asking Ananda Mohima, and I was talking Bengali, and I didn't know quite how to say it, so uh, I wanted to ask if uh, what I had done was pleasing to her in a spiritual sense. And I didn't know how to say pleasing to you, so I said, is it, uh, does it make you happy? She said, I'm always happy. <laughs> and in fact, that's what, that's what you find on the path. The longer you go on the path, the more you find her always happy and nothing really touches you. And you can be at death's door and you just lie there blissfully feeling happy. And people do things that are, are uh, unfair, unkind, and uh, in one way you, you are sorry, but on the other hand, you know that it doesn't touch you. You're happy in yourself. That's what this spiritual path is all about. That, I think, is the ultimate guideline to moral uh, judgments. That is to say, whether I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing, does it give you inner bliss? And that's how Master was. He was not touched by anything. He was always in that bliss. Being with him, you, could, you, had, to, you had to watch it, though. Uh, he didn't put it out. You had to tune into it. He didn't uh, go around with M for Master on his T-shirt. <laughs> it, it, it was something that you had to sort of catch. And even the miracles that he performed, he never did said, Lo, I do such and such. But around him, things happened. I remember this, this episode, I think I've mentioned this also in the, in the path, how uh, a brother disciple and I were uh, plastering a garage. 
Well, he did the plastering and I did the mixing of the mud. And this, this uh, plaster was very, it must have been very old because it would set up uh, before we could get it on the wall. And I had to keep pouring water onto it and working it to keep it soft so that he could keep using it. I had just poured a fresh batch when Master drove up and stopped the car. He had the car stopped, he wasn't driving, and had the car stopped and called us over. Well, of course, I was delighted to talk to him. He talked at least a half an hour. And we, but in the back of my mind, there was this anxiety. <laughs> that, uh, I'd need a hammer and chisel to get that stuff off the board. Well, you know, when I came back, it was completely soft. <laughs> After half an hour, and we had no more trouble with it the rest of the day. He didn't say anything. It just, uh, just was normal to him. Of course it was normal. I mean, if he's one with the person who created the universe, what's a bit of plaster on a board? But uh, there was no uh, effort to call attention to the fact that he'd done it to the point where we thought, well, is it coincidence? Well, once might be a coincidence, but these things keep happening. You begin to realize there's something, there's a common denominator at work there. Long I've called you, my Lord. Long I've called you. Many years I have longed for your sight. Bathe the darkness with tears of divorce. Offered candles in prayer to your light. How much longer, friend, must I cry? I see my age is one. Yeah. <laughs> in San Francisco, I remember in the Scottish Rite Auditorium before thousands, I worked up to the problem as to what my age was. And the lowest I got was 25. And the highest I got was 700. <laughs> and so I asked them, do you want to know my age? And they all said, Yes, from the whole I said, I never my age. They were asking the age of my house. I have no age. My age is one. Infinite. But you ask a person his age, you don't ask the age of the house. Or is not the age of the person. This is the house that I live in. My age is infinite. So it's wonderful to have one candle. Shall I put well, it out? If you can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I you think want I have, help? You want us all to help? I think still I have a little <laughs> strength of bread. <laughs> Good.
the first birthday, I don't know whose idea it was, but I felt the love behind it and I thought of Master, so much so that I saw Master sitting there instead of myself. He, whose oneness with me, has enabled me to help so many, to bring so many bouquets of souls unto the Almighty Omnipresence. I say, make your hearts a hermitage. So many souls that you see, their hearts are hermitage. And I am very proud of you all who are here and who are together with us here. You may think that God is invisible and doesn't talk to you. That isn't true. You keep him away, far away from you. Those who think him to be the nearest of the dear, they find him nearest of the near, dearest of the dear. And those who think him far away, they do not find him at all, for he is far away. You close your eyes and the light is gone, right in front of you. you open your eyes, it's there. So is God's omnipresence. He has purposely hidden. Imagine, if he had talked to all, he would be pestered to death. I don't think he would like to exist anywhere, because he is everywhere. That's why he remains quiet, and to make him talk, you have to give him the third degree of your heart. <laughs> then he will talk, <laughs> and he does talk. If I didn't know, I wouldn't have told you so. He does talk. And he does answer. It is so touching. He is more than human, because he has become all human beings. It is foolishness to say that God is not personal. God is very personal. He has become all of us. And when we see him, we see him working through everybody. Sometimes a little child will say something, and I'll, I'll hear his voice. And it is true. Behold him through every niche of space on every altar of your thought, and he shall behold you. He who watcheth me everywhere, I watch him always. He never loses sight of me, nor I lose sight of him. That's what Bhagavad Gita says. God bless you all. When Dr. Lewis introduced Master um, for that talk that you just heard, which was on his birthday, of course, and it was in 1952. So just, it's powerful to know that it was just a couple of months, a few months, before he would be leaving his body. He, of course, knew that. So it was the last birthday message that we have from him. But when Dr. Lewis introduced him in that talk, the applause just went on and on and on. It was very powerful listening to it today. Just imagining what those souls felt like sitting in that room. And he was there. <laughs> I mean, it's such an odd thing to say, but there was Master, and they just, you could feel the explosion of joy. It wasn't simply applause, though it's compelling if you hear it. It just, uh, it takes you beyond this state that you're in. But you realize that it was human beings just looking for a way. It was this energy coming through them. How can we express our love, our gratitude, this extraordinary feeling that he's here? Because Dr. Lewis said, here is the greatest gift of all. Our master is right here with us. That's how he introduced him. And it just took my breath away. That's all I can say. I, I heard this little blurb yesterday that we played for you just now. 
I hope you could understand it. Sometimes it's hard to understand, Master. If you pull it up on your own computer, it's much easier to understand. But he was so charming. And somehow, today I downloaded that whole talk. And I spent much of the day listening to it. I would listen to a little bit of it, then take care of whatever other business, then listen again, and then meditate for a while. And so I, I really had this experience of spending the day with my dearest friend. That's what it felt like, because when you hear this talk, and you could hear it just now when he was talking about the people in the Scottish Rite Temple. And he said, so I said to them, do you want to know my age? And then from the whole temple, he said there were thousands. I think he said that there. He said it came, yes. And he's just, he's right in it. It's exactly what Swamiji said. Swamiji said when he was talking about Louise Royston, when he made that comment, which is, you could think it was terrible, but when you watch Swamiji say it, and you realize, and Master looking and saying, she was even uglier when she first got here, <laughs> that he would just be so human and just say, that's the truth. In essence, saying, look at what this energy has done for her. But all through this talk, all through this last birthday talk, there is so much love. I listened to the talk because I was saying to myself, what is the thread? What will I speak about tonight? Usually make a point. Would it be a quality of his? Would it be a story he told? Something. But he captured me so. And what I found all day and what I'm feeling now as I listen to this music that calls to him, this Swamiji's words speaking about him and laughing and so joyful, Swamiji, as he's speaking about Master and then Master himself and listening to this talk that's, it was about an hour and 20 minutes. It wasn't a talk. He would talk a little bit, sit down, talk again, so it's segments. But what happened all day is that all he spoke about through so many stories and quotations of the Gita, and he would be Krishna and he would say, Arjuna, and he would then speak to Arjuna and quote one of the passages as he just did, um, in, even in that little segment, was all he kept saying is, love God, and I will show you through story, through quotes, through my examples in my life and examples in your life, through stories of the people who have followed God and through stories of those who got lost. What it means, I will show you over and over again how to open your heart so that God can enter. And he said this again and again, and take up residence in your heart. He wants to be there. And he used the word cradle, which we were just using so often about Christ consciousness as we spoke throughout Christmas. And today I realized Christ consciousness comes to us through all of these great masters. It was the same with master. I could feel him whenever I could be still enough that he could enter and I felt him in my heart. And I realized we can all do that. And he's, he was telling us that. Now he was speaking about God. He wasn't saying, let me in. That's not what he was doing. Though I think a couple of times in this talk, he would say, and he said part of it here, if you close your eyes, the light is gone, 
But when you open your eyes, the light is there. It's always there. And at some points, he said, it's right here, meaning in me. He said, when I close my eyes and I look into my third eye, I join a party of saints. That's what he said. He said that they are having a party and you too can find them because that's where truth is. And he said, what we think we are, because he was talking about how hard it is for us to imagine truth and what love really means and what con that expanded state of consciousness means. He said, but here is the truth. What we look around and think we're seeing is exactly what's not real. What is real only comes to us here and here. And as I said before, over and over, he kept saying, it's so simple, but you don't want to do it yet. The more you decide to do it, you just start talking to God. He said, invite God in everywhere. Notice him everywhere. Be with him. Ask for his presence. And he said, you just start mentioning his name, which all of us can do. He wasn't using fancy language that we can't understand. He wasn't even saying, God is love. He was saying that, but he wasn't using those words. But he was saying, if you begin to speak to God, he will just start talking to you. He will come to you. And story after story, he showed us how utterly simple it is. And he kept saying, don't get lost in the personality. Don't get lost with the mistakes that you've made. Know that you are perfect, that God sees you as perfect. And the minute you decide to reach for him, you too will realize that. But with such utter presence as a human being, as a dear friend, we've heard Swamiji say it, but if you listen to this talk, and it's really all that you're doing because it happened for me. So I know it can just happen for everybody because I don't remember his words just now, but because it's the truth. It is what is. We're not trying to imagine something that isn't. We're calling on our very dear friend. And he was just right there. And I'm getting these talks confused right now, but Swamiji, I think, spoke about the fact, and that was the experience today. And again, the talk is available to everybody, but he didn't go anywhere. He didn't leave. He's here, the nearest of the near and the dearest of the dear as he says, and he says over and over, you will not win God through reason. You can't, because he already has all of the wisdom that is. The only thing that's missing between us and him is this connection of the heart. He very sweetly quotes Jesus when Jesus says, it's not the prudent and the wise who would find God, it's the babes. And Master saying, come to him as a child. And he says, if you keep saying, you just keep uttering the words, my father, I am your child, my father. So you come to him as a babe. It really reminded me of the story of St. Francis when he was in court and his father had taken him to court and he was 
uh, you're in, everybody's heard this story, so you, re, you know the scene. Francis finally just took off all of his clothes. He made himself naked other than that hair shirt. And he uttered those words. He said, I forget his father's name now, but he said, it's not my father. But he said, you, you can all hear me. I say before all of you, my father who art in heaven. So there was Francis coming before God as a little child. And that is exactly what Master was saying. And what Master was repeating that Jesus said. So the simplicity of this path came to me, even in the midst of some very hard times, whatever they are for any of us. I didn't mean that right now about this time of the virus, but certainly this has been a hard time for certain people. But all of those crises in our own lives, even right then, where are you, Father? Father, I know you wouldn't leave me. I want to open my heart. Come, take up residence here. Lay down in my heart. Rest. Whatever it is, however we call, we would use those words, but our own language, just the simple language of the heart. I realized, and I, I use that word consciously, I realize today what pure bhakti, bhakti master brought, what absolute ability to just awaken love in so many hearts, to give us that experience so that we could bypass the mind and just be with him and feel him. Swamiji says in some talk somewhere, we didn't hear it today, but he's told us he used to often just sit in the back of the room because he wanted to just absorb Master's vibration. He wanted to just feel that. And what is that? That is this uh, incarnation of pure love that came when he did to bring all that he brought and up to and including Kriya Yoga and as many times as he says later in this talk, it's all about meditation. But what is meditation? Meditation is simply sitting still enough, getting quiet enough that our hearts burst open, the heart chakra opens so that this energy can flow and we can feel that extraordinary presence of the divine so beyond anything that we know as human love. And Master says it's, it's just all in there with Kriya, with this type of meditation, of course, that he came to bring, this technique. But he's just saying to us, these are the ways. He said even a little bit of course, he was quoting the Gita without quoting it. He didn't give us the direct quote, but he's saying it doesn't take much. He said, meditate for one hour. That's what he said. Of course, that's not a lot to him. But meditate for an hour. And in that hour, you will get, you can experience the divine. In an hour of Kriya Yoga, it's right there even a little practice of this inward religion can free us from dire fears and colossal sufferings. That, of course, is what Krishna said in the Gita, but Master saying it, truth is eternal. And Master is right here reminding us every time we sit to meditate, every time we sing these songs, every time we listen to Swamiji, or look in each other's eyes, he really calls on us to see God everywhere. He says it in every plant, in every flower. We're singing it in Swamiji's words. But Master says, every time you look into each other's eyes, know that God is there. God is everywhere. And that's what he said in this talk. Of course he's right here, he said. 
How could he not be? It's truth. I'm here. I'm the divine. I'm not this body. I'm not limited. I'm not this house that you want to give an age to. I'm ageless. That beautiful reading that Rita read, I hadn't heard it. So beautiful, that whispers, where he just kept saying, how could I be time? How could I be age? How could I be this body? Nothing can contain me, which means he's everywhere. He's in all of us. And we don't have to wait for his birthday to listen, to hear his voice, to feel that, and let it just lift us up. And for that, this is why Dr. Lewis said, the greatest gift of all, we have our guru here, and we have our guru here, as much as they did then. For those who think me near, I will be near. So silently and sweetly the master comes to me. His love and joy unfold me in bliss and ecstasy. My mind is calm and peaceful. All cares are swept away. And in his omnipresence, I know that I am free. My mind is calm and peaceful. All cares are swept away. And in his omnipresence, I know that I am free. So sweet the sound of Om, tis Master's voice I hear. In all pervading silence, he whispers, I am here. My heart with joy is flowing. It sings eternally. There is no other love like the Master's love for me. My heart with joy is flowing. It sings eternally. There is no other love like the Master's love for me. There is no other love like the Master's love for me. January 5th is the birthday anniversary of our great guru, Paramahansa Yogananda. Really all of our life depends on the great gift of his wisdom, his joy, and his love. He said that those three qualities especially were the ones that he manifested during this lifetime. And his coming to the West in 1920 as a young man began a wave of consciousness that changed the world. But I think more importantly for each of us has changed our lives, uplifted them and given them a direction. And we want to do everything we can in remembrance of his birth into the world and into ultimately our consciousness to honor him and to say, happy birthday, Master. It was nearly 130 years ago 
that Paramahansa Yogananda was born into this world. He was then Mukunda Lal Ghosh, born into a devout Hindu family in the city of Bareilly in northern India. But his destiny was not to remain in India, even to remain a Hindu. His destiny was to change the consciousness of the world. He was invited in 1920 to leave India, come to the West, and his great guru, Sri Yukteswar, said to him on the eve of his leaving, leaving India, he said, forget you were born a Hindu, but don't become an American, a Westerner. Take the best of your brothers and sisters of all people, of all nations, and show them your true self, a child of God. And this is the path that we follow. We are neither Easterners nor Westerners, Hindus or Christians or Jews or Muslims. We are children of God, born in the same light as our great guru, Yogananda Ji. And so as the, this year unfolds, 2022, it may be a year of great challenges for you, for me, for the whole world. But remember, Yogananda faced every obstacle in life. He said, there are no obstacles. There are only opportunities. So this year, let us see it as a year of great spiritual opportunities that we might all grow deeper in God, deeper in our Guru's blessings and inner presence. And may we be able to share his great, great consciousness in whatever capacity we can with everyone whom we meet. So as Master said, the yogi must stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. And so the worlds may break around us, but as followers of the great yogi who wrote his autobiography, let us stand unshaken and be a source of strength and hope and courage to all whom we meet. God bless you all. A reading from Whispers from Eternity. <clears throat> I was made for thee. I was made for thee alone. I was made for dropping flowers of devotion gently at thy feet on the altar of the morning. My hands were made to serve thee willingly, to remain folded in adoration, waiting for thy coming, and when thou comest, to bathe thy feet with my tears. My voice was made to sing thy glory. My feet were made to seek thy temples everywhere. My eyes were made a chalice to hold thy burning love and the wisdom falling from thy nature's hands. My ears were made to catch the music of thy footsteps echoing through the halls of space and to hear thy divine melodies flowing through all heart tracks of devotion. My lips were made to breathe forth thy praises and thine intoxicating inspirations. My love was made to throw incandescent searchlight flames to find thee hidden in the forest of my desires. My heart was made to respond to thy call alone. My soul was made to be the channel through which thy love might flow uninterruptedly into all thirsty souls. Oh, my 
master, may thy joy fill our days. O master, may thy wisdom guide our ways. The time has come for us to see that there's but one reality upon the earth and high above, the truth that all was made from love. A love that calls to us to fly above the hills, above the sky, above the storms, above the pain, a land where peace and laughter reign. O oh, Master, may thy joy fill our days. O oh, Master, may thy wisdom guide our ways. Guide all our hopes and all our dreams, past every glow that only seems into the light, the inner sun, into the truth that we're all one. Help us to find in every hour, in every thought, in every flower, a joy that spans eternity, the truth that makes us ever free. O oh, Master, may thy joy fill our days. O oh, Master, may thy wisdom guide our ways. O oh, Master, may thy joy fill our days. O oh, Master, may thy wisdom guide our ways. Let's end the evening with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, Saints of all religions, beloved Swamiji, we lovingly bow before you all. May thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of our devotion. And may we be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om. Peace. Amen.